everybody, welcome back to my channel. I am Meg and if you're new here, welcome. Today I am sharing with you this wardrobe that is a wardrobe that I think everybody has in their house at some point and it needs a makeover. And so I'm gonna share with you how I give this piece a really big makeover and a new look. It is solid wood on top and the drawers and the wardrobe doors as well. First of all, what I always do is take off the hardware. Now, I am not keeping the hardware. The bottom drawers have the Batman hardware and also the top, I'm not keeping either. So I took them off but kept them aside just in case I need them for another piece. I always believe that taking your hardware off is the best prep work because you don't want to paint over hardware and then when your customer or person needs to change the hardware, it has paint on it and not underneath. I took out the drawers and took off the hardware that were on the drawers and noticed that they were not even on the runners, so I made sure that they could go back on properly. It really does suck when your drawers don't go in properly and move smoothly. So I took off that hardware and then I used my little vacuum, which I'm loving lately, to clean out behind and underneath the drawers. After I had vacuumed under the drawers, I knew what I wanted to do to the top and I wanted it to be solid wood and have a raw wood look to it. So I used my Ryobi sander and I had mentioned before that my other sander had broken and wasn't attached to the shop vac. So this video was made almost a month ago and so yes, I did end up getting a new sander because I cannot handle that dust. So this is what the top looks like so far and I'm just going to sand the rest of the top and scuff sanded the entire piece. Scuff sanding, which I have been asked lately, what is scuff sanding? It is going over the surface with 220 grit sanding paper or 220 sanding disc on your sander. Because if you use 80 grit or anything lower than 220, it'll scratch up your surface and you'll see that through your primer and your paint. And you don't want that. So 220, a gentle scuff sand is what that is. I then used Crud Cutter, which I find is a really, really good cleaner. It's probably my favorite so far because it gets off a lot of dirt and a lot of grease and grime. Thinking over this piece, I decided I was going to sand the drawers. Now, because this piece was a new release product piece for Redesign My Prima, I knew already what transfer and tissue paper I was using. So I was trying to put together the look that I wanted. So I sanded the drawers and I'm using the Ryobi sander with 80 grit sanding disc. Now the sanding discs that I'm using are 3M discs, which are their newer ones, where the air can actually go through the mesh. Now here I primed most of the piece, but I wanted to show you priming the inside. This is Kills Restoration Primer. It's the primer that I've been using on almost every piece lately because it's really good with bleed through and it's also really good with removing odors and it provides a really good smooth finish, especially when you're sanding in between coats. When you're spraying, you can check out my other video on how to use a Wagner sprayer. You need to make sure that your settings are right for primer and settings are right for paint as well. Make sure when you're spraying paint, primer, and top coat that you are wearing a respirator. 
I got mine off of Amazon and also make sure that you're changing the filters every three to four months. Also that's important when you're spraying or painting and priming is your sanding in between coats. I always use 220 sanding pads to sand primer because it's a bit rougher. And with paint I use a thousand grit sanding block and then top coat I use 2000 sanding block. This is the second coat of primer and I had taken out the drawers so that I could spray in between on the trim because the drawers were solid wood so they did not need to be sprayed. Here is what it looks like so far and you can see the paint the, the primer sorry is still wet. Once it had dried I sanded with my sanding pad Now sometimes on your hinges they can peel, so make sure that you scuff sand them, but if it's fine with the look that you're going for, then you can just leave them. So now it's time to paint once the primer had dried. And this is Country Chic Paint in Simplicity. And I did about two coats of the paint. This is the second coat. When you sand to raw wood, when you go to top coat it, it comes out orange. As you can see here, it's orange wood when I sprayed the water. So any water or top coat will turn the wood orange. It's actually the original color of the wood that comes through, but I don't want that, that color. So what I always do is do a paint wash and I always use a beige color called Soiree by Country Chic Paint. I used to do a whitewash, but I found that I don't want that look and that the beige paint actually resembled the raw wood much better and it still let the, the wood grain come through. So I spray water onto the surface, I then brush on the paint and then use a rag to wipe the excess off. Once that had dried, I put clear coat from Country Chic Paint onto the surface using my angle brush and then place the tissue paper on top. I then used my utility knife to cut around the edges where I wanted it. And if there's any excess paper that you want to take off, you can remove that as well as I'm doing right here. Once I had the paper where I wanted it and cut off the excess paper, I then used my brush to brush on the clear coat on top to seal it. When the clear coat cures and settles and dries, it turns quite hard. And I find that this is the most durable way to seal the paper. I used my utility knife to cut open the little hardware holes as well. And then it was time to take off the paper. At this point, I haven't sealed it yet but I need to seal the top and also do the paint wash on the top as well. So it's time to take the plastic off. So this is the new release transfer 
that I can now show to you. Transfers are very easy to apply when you are putting it onto a flat surface. They do get a little bit tricky when you're putting them on to curved areas like I am doing to this piece. But it can be done and I did it and it looks absolutely amazing. You just need to use green tape to place the transfer where you want it. Know where you're going to cut because you can cut the transfers into pieces where you want them. Use the tool that it comes with to rub the transfer on and then peel back the plastic. Here's a close up of what I'm doing. And this area is really curved here. So when you're rubbing it on, you will see a small crack in between the transfer and the, the other side, which is totally fine. Cutting it into pieces like this makes it much easier to apply and to, to put it onto the curved areas. If the transfer stays onto the plastic, just put the plastic back and rub again. Always wait two to three days, even longer, maybe four, if your paint really needs a long time to cure. So I had gotten the transfer on, finally, on both doors, doing the whole process that I just showed you. Then it was time to seal and I used Country Chic Paint Clear Coat. Again, make sure you're wearing a respirator like I have. It's really quite hard to see that I'm spraying the clear coat because it's clear, but it's going on. And I did about three coats. When you're spraying over the transfer, Make sure that it doesn't run and that you only do one coat because it does take longer to dry. If you need to, take a cloth and just wipe away any excess clear coat that's on there. Then it was time to put the handles on and this is what the entire piece looks like. It turned out exactly how I wanted it to look. I got the hardware from Lee Valley the bottom hardware from Lee Valley as well. This was the look that I was going for. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this video and I will see you next week, Sunday at 3 p.m. Eastern.